I mean, being a full-time artist is really intense. And I think to see everyone else kind of in the same boat, we're all just like on our laptops, like stress, working on like 10 things at the same time. I think I was like, oh, okay. So it's not just like us doing this. It's like, oh, there's a whole community of other people who are also like in this mode and in this right. hustle. And I liked seeing that and it made me feel like, oh, okay, this is great. Cause it can be kind of isolated. Play. Play. Hi, I'm Sandira. I am a curator and researcher at Factory Berlin, and I lead the Artists in Residence program with Sonar Plus D and Beast by Dr. Dre. We started this residency um, with science, tech, and art um, kind of the basis of our focus, um, and it makes sense uh, to have such a program here at Factory Berlin. Um, which is one of Europe's largest tech ecosystems. Um, so for artists to have access to a diverse variety of networks um, is really key here. Well, my name is Cora Novoa and I'm an electronic music producer based in Barcelona, Berlin, Berlin, Barcelona. <laughs> I'm working right now with Aaron, he's another artist from the residency based in Berlin. Uh, he works more in augmented reality and also in immersive experience. The final product will be a live set where we are performing on stage and we are being um, tracked by, for example, some um, depth camera and we will use this footage to um, transform ourselves or bring ourselves into some semi-virtual space. The idea of the project is to create an immersive experience but focus on the dance floor. My name's Tony Cruz. I'm a sound artist, originally from Maryland, just outside of Washington, D.C. I had the pleasure of meeting Deja and Anya, and pretty early on in the residency, we realized that we had a lot in common and kind of spoke the same language, so that really congealed into the installation that they have coming up. I'd rather be in a dark silence than... You know, it really shaped the work, and it really mm -hmm. shaped the exhibition, because I don't think we would have focused in and narrowed in into even the vocal aspect that Tony Cruz brought mm -hmm. to our exhibition, we wouldn't have discovered that in the same way. Um, so that was truly a collaboration. It took on uh, a life of its own. Yeah, I, I wrote a poem for them and, and collaged and stitched together, kind of more bricolage, this sound piece, incorporating the poem, but also incorporating modular synths and drones and those kind of experimental sensibilities. And we could do that spontaneously and it really allowed us to not have to necessarily pre-plan but have the ability to you know improvise and ebb and flow in the process. And yeah that actually happened yeah. where Tony was out somewhere and he came back and he's like I was just on the U-Bahn and I wrote the whole privacy is fake now poem and I was like what do you mean you wrote it he's like it's done and so he read it to me and he's like should we go record this now mm -hmm. and I'm like yeah so then immediately we like walked in here and then he recorded it and it went from like happened and was written on the s-bahn and then like 40 minutes later he was in the studio recording it and then we had it we're a studio above and below made of Perry James Ogden and Daria Jelonek we are a London-based artist duo working primarily with um, XR, augmented reality and live data. Uh, for our project at Factory Berlin, uh, we have been exploring EEG signals and EMG, which are uh, electrical signals from the brain, and using this as a starting point to explore how this data can augment um, an audio-visual experience. So um, the project that I'm doing together with Studio Above and Below will uh, collect data sets and will work with the EEG, EMG brainwave signals and I'm incorporating them into Ableton Live 
and working with like different patches uh, to create like a narrative sound immersion. I'm really excited that uh, I'm at a place where I can just utilize the music studio and especially the XR room with like a 64 speaker system and to get more into the ambisonic kind of approach on music. It's been a really great experience. I've met some people that I would normally have never crossed paths with before because I feel like I'm quite in my little bubble of 3D artists and so I've, I've discovered new artists from outside of my bubble, outside of my country. Something that I'm much more aware of now is funding for artists, so, so it wasn't something I ever explored before, but after a lot of talks with some of the mentors I've realised that maybe funding is a route to go down instead of just working commercially. I think the insight provided by the, one of the mentors and about like how to present your work for, let's say, bigger funding opportunities or like bigger projects. That is some of the insight that I really could say got out from the residency that otherwise it would have been more like something that you kind of have to learn trial and error, but to have the insight from mentors, that is like super valuable because then it's like from their word that they know they're working in the funding circuit for art and technology, they actually can provide their experience towards that. So they, I would say that's one of the big takeaways. I think it's very important also just like having to present like what you're doing and like trying to explain why you're doing it and why you're doing it a certain way on like a regular basis also kind of makes you have to like reflect over like all those questions or like your working process and like mm -hmm. what should be changed or like which direction it's going in. Yeah, yeah, help. yeah. I think it's where improve. healthy, yeah. Uh, an impact that I really want to have is that I want more people like me, more women, more non-binary people, more intersex, more trans people in the arts, in this industry because the 3D industry is super male dominated, it's also very white dominated and I just want to make sure that the up-and-coming generation of 3D artists don't look the same as the one before. For me, my art is more of a process of healing, um, showing vulnerabilities, showing like your true self, and um, the different tools that we use in order to heal. Like for me, it's music. I've experienced this many times that literally a second in a music piece or a scene in a film or just a quick glance at a painting has changed my life. So I feel like any piece of art can do that and I think this is a moment where it's important to also kind of shine a light on the future and portray a bright future and see also what, how artists can use technology in order to create a better world in some ways. With every technology, uh, there is new creative outputs from this, like in terms of like the invention of the electric guitar brought about like rock and roll music or like electric instruments brought about new genres of music. What I'm interested in is what new genres will AI music and specifically like AI synthesized music is gonna bring to the world, right? So that's kind of like my, my drive to it because it, I'm always really about challenging high technology in my personal artwork. I feel like with current societal issues, it's very easy to get frustrated, upset and, and angry. And I think uh, artwork can oftentimes reflect that. However, um, I really strive to make sure that my output is, is you know, positive. I think that's like the, the most important thing to me, to have like a positive contribution. And if somebody can come to one of my exhibitions and leave with the incentive to just, I guess, you know, have a coffee with that childhood friend they haven't seen in, in years or you know just to like call their mom or something you know like that's that's really it for me you know that's like that small little impact like I'm happy with that. I was, I'm so grateful for the factory that's why I spend 12 hours here every day because I really am not wasting a second that I have here and, and this residency taught me how precious time was it told me how precious uh, collaboration is and it showed and it showed me that when I'm honest and I'm truthful which you know I am we're all 
most of the time, right? Uh, um, you really, you really get that back in spades from other people.